Hi, I'm Dan Holt. Come along today and explore Oregon with me. This ranch is a little north of Brothers, Oregon. It's one of a few deserted ranches in an area that used to have six other towns nearby. Now there's only Brothers left, and that's probably because Highway 20 from Bend to Boise runs through. There's not a trace left of Roberts, Held, Barnes, Dry Lake, or Fife, Oregon anymore. Only a few deserted places and crumbling fences is all there is left to show that people one time lived and farmed in this area. Now Brothers is just 30 miles west of Bend. From there we take a dirt road north to the old Bear Creek Road where we'll see some of those abandoned ranches and then over to the regular road and we'll go by Prineville Reservoir State Park and then we'll see some pretty canyons and fishing between there and Prineville. Brothers is a small town that was built by two brothers who opened a restaurant and a gas station on Oregon's busy Highway 20. Today, a modern station and restaurant has replaced the old ones. When you travel this part of Oregon, all you see is miles and miles of nothing but sagebrush. One of the very best things about Brothers is this nice oasis rest area, out here in the middle of a very lonely stretch of highway. After you travel about eight miles north of Brothers, you come to Bear Creek Road and this old log and batten ranch. It's amazing that in such a short distance you come to fir trees and green grass, even the trickle of a small creek. There are about a half dozen inhabited ranches along this road. And just a few miles from the log cabin, we came to this nice abandoned two-story farm. The only thing that would make it a little hard to live here is that the bridge is out and you have to walk from the creek. Otherwise the house is still livable looks like. Let's just spend a few minutes looking around. This is what's left of the bridge coming into this place. There must have been pretty wealthy people lived here because they had a three-holer.
after leaving that nice ranch, you next come to an old dry wash, and then an old dead tree that's got moss on it, and it's kind of pretty. And then next you come to another old ranch that's deserted. We're going to take a little look around there too. Next we go to the main road, then north to the Prineville Reservoir, then downstream clear to Prineville. You know the Lord Jesus made all this beautiful country just for us to enjoy, and it's a privilege to serve Him. As a shepherd leads his sheep to the best pastures, the Lord can lead us to the most enjoyable life, if we can just be willing to lay down our will and live by His word.
part two of our journey today is a hike through Buford Park or better known as Mount Pisgah Arboretum. You just go past Lane Community College to the end of Eugene's 30th Avenue then jog north a block and out to the east end of CV Loop. The route is well marked by signs so it's easy to find. Now while we do a little bit of exploring around, I'd like for Rhoda Love, a botany instructor from Lane Community College, to tell us a little bit of what she knows about this beautiful park. This first trail up the steep hill is when you first come into the park, but we're going to start down in the flat place at the bottom and take the brown trail that goes clear around the outside and back again. I hope I have this straight. This is a little bit complicated. About 20 years ago, the uh, owners of, this, of the whole area up the mountain all the way over to the Pleasant Hillside agreed to donate the land to the state for a park. And uh, so the state did accept it and for quite a while it was a piece of state property. Then the ownership was transferred to Lane County. So it became a Lane County Park and was named Buford Park because uh, in honor of Howard Buford who had been a, a land planner, a prominent uh, person in land planning in this area. And then about uh, 17 or 18 years ago a group of citizens in Eugene with the help of the mayor of Eugene at that time who was Les Anderson uh, were looking for a place to start an arboretum or tree park and uh, this piece of property here, 108 acres of Buford Park looked very very good to them because it's geographically diverse and has some some hills and some sunny south facing slopes and some streams and so um, they arranged to lease this 108 acres from Lane County and I believe we have a hundred year lease maybe uh, I think we might possibly be negotiating to even l lengthen that lease to an even longer lease because if you're going to grow trees why well, you need to be thinking far into the future. So that's the history. And the Arboretum was originally called the International Arboretum because the idea was to um, grow trees from around the world. And then later it was named, uh, the name was changed to Mount Pisgah Arboretum because that helped people to um, associate its name with its location and, and know where it was. But by the way, uh, the group uh, that was formed to build the Arboretum is called Friends of Mount Pisgah Arboretum. And they have a newsletter and so forth. And one of the first things that they got busy on was first pulling out the blackberries which just uh, had smothered this area. It was nothing like it is now. It was totally overgrown up, you know, sometimes up 10 feet tall with sprawling uh, introduced Himalayan blackberry. So the first huge job was to pull all of those out and almost all of that was done by hand. And, and, volunteers and with volunteers, absolutely. And then the second thing to do was to lay out a system of trails so that people could enjoy it. And again, that was done primarily with volunteer labor. In the early years, for a couple of summers, some CETA volunteers, uh, that's a, a government program that um, puts low-income people to work. Um, uh, for a couple of summers, CETA volunteers helped with trail building and bridge building. But in general, except for uh, some uh, youth, uh, youth groups that our uh, caretaker Tom oversees in the summer, again these are, are disadvantaged young people uh, who are being put to work in the outdoors, except for that almost all this work has been done by volunteers. This little garden that we're standing in now has been planted and taken care of by volunteers and um, most of the uh, construction on the site has been done by volunteers. The clearing of the weeds which has to go on all the time is done by volunteers. Removing of poison oak close to the trail so that it's safe to walk here. Almost all done by volunteers. This I think is one of the prettiest parts of the Arboretum. There's this lovely little stream meandering through with the beautiful moss-covered rocks and we have a trail beside it so that you can enjoy it and it's nice to listen to it too I think. And then we have a bridge here leading over to our picnic area and that's very popular in the spring and the summer. We have lots of people 
um, out here enjoying a lunch after their walk. And um, this is in a grove of Oregon oaks. Now the Arboretum has some great big oaks down in the central meadow that are over 300 years old. So those were here when the Indians were using this area. But this little grove in back of me where the picnic tables are, um, those are younger. They look to me like they're probably about 150 years old. The oaks haven't leafed out yet this summer. They'll, they'll be coming along in a couple of months. But now is a wonderful time to look at the lichens that are hanging from the oak branches. And you can see this gray material that droops down. Some people think it's moss. And some people think it, they've heard of Spanish moss and they think that it's Spanish moss. But it's neither moss nor Spanish moss. It's lichen. And lichen is a combination of a fungus and an algae living together. The algae gives it the kind of uh, greenish color and the fungus gives it its shape. Though most of those lichens hanging down from these trees here are either fishnet lichen or one that's called old man's beard. Well, I'm not really an expert on lichens, but I did happen to be out here with Dr. Daphne Stone about a week or two ago when she did a field trip for the Native Plant Society. And that's why I'm up on my lichens today. Okay. But uh, I'll hide this one for a minute. They do happen to be just about the same color, that sort of greenish gray. But this one is the fishnet lichen. And perhaps you can see that it got that name because if you look at the individual strands, you actually see that it, it looks like a, a fishnet with those um, openings, or maybe like a chicken wire fence. So that's the fishnet. It always grows where there's moisture in the air. And of course, with the creek nearby, we would know that there would be moisture in the air here. The old man's beard, while it is the same color and tends to be, be sort of long and stringy, is a little bit different. If you can get a single strand, you find that it doesn't, it isn't like a chicken wire fence. It has a central core with side, side branches. And each of those is maybe a little bit fuzzy. But the neat thing that Dr. Stone told us about this one is that if you take it in your fingers, it's kind of springy. It has a central cord that's springy like a rubber band. So that's nature's bungee cord. Hmm. But you do have to look fairly closely to um, distinguish between them. And you should avoid picking them off the trees if you can. You can usually find plenty, uh, plenty of lichens too examine and study just lying on the ground where they've been blown off by the winter winds. So I'll return these to the ground now. Thanks Rhoda for telling us about the park and the lichens. I'd like to mention that Mount Pisgah is named after a famous mountain east of Jordan. Moses climbed to the top of Mount Pisgah to take just one last look at the promised land that he wasn't able to lead the children of Israel to because he had disobeyed just one of God's orders. God has given us several simple rules to live by in his word that will bring true peace and happiness if we obey them. Unfortunately he makes no exceptions even for a major prophet. If we pass his testing time then he grants even the very desires of our hearts now as we climb to the top of this mile and a half trail up Mount Pisgah, let's listen to a verse from a song about this mountain, Sweet Hour of Prayer. Sweet hour of prayer, sweet hour of prayer, may I thy consolation share. Till from Mount Pisgah's lofty height I view my home and take my flight This robe of flesh I'll drop and rise To seize the everlasting prize and shout while passing through the air farewell farewell sweet hour of prayer
Come back again next time. Let's see some more of Oregon.